What goes on guys? We're back here again with yet another review and today we're going to be taking a look at some brand new Pokemon figures. Today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Jazzwares Pokemon Battle Pack environment sets of the Lake environment, Shoreside Lake, the Ancient Ruins set, and the Haunted Forest set along with taking a look at the Pokemon Select Mewtwo from the Trainer Team series and man... What a lot of good Pokemon here. Um, I found them all today, so I said why not throw them all in one video. As you can see on the back of the box, on all these boxes, it's just showing the other three. Here, I've reviewed all three of these figures at this point, so go check out those videos if you haven't already. And then the other back of the boxes are the same thing. So, with all that being said, without further ado, let's go ahead and pop these bad boys open. Here's the barcode for Mewtwo, if you're looking for it, by the way. So, getting these sets and Mewtwo out of the packaging, I gotta say, Jazzwares continues to impress me with how awesome their sets and their figures can be. Because they really did an excellent job with this assortment here. Now, I really have gotten to the point where I have a ton of Pokemon in my collection, which I never thought would be the case. Originally, I was just going to get like the three main starters, Pikachu, and then when this line dropped, I was going to get Charizard, and then they just kept releasing them, and I was like, oh, I'm going to go all in, and I have been going in all in all in since. There's a couple more that just came out, like Trubbish is out, I do want to get Trubbish, the Clipping Go Trubbish, I just hate the Pokeballs, I don't want them. Um... I never got the Kabuto. Hopefully I can get him down the line. Um, Electabuzz, I never got him. Or Electivire, I think it was in like that big pack as I had everything else. But for the most part, I'm pretty caught up with this line. And pretty much anything Jasper has been doing with Pokemon, which I'm very excited. So I hope that they just keep going. They keep this line forever. And, you know, I can't wait to get a shelf with all these little, little guys all over the place. So without further ado, we'll start with Mewtwo. Get him out of the way because there's a lot more to talk about with the sets. And then... We'll continue on from there. Taking a look at Mewtwo. This is the f second or third time that we got a figure in this line that actually feels like an action figure. He moves. You can pose him. He looks great. Man, this is an awesome figure. Maybe top 10 material for the year. I don't know. Definitely an honorable mention. I really have been enjoying this figure, especially compared to the last one that I got. Um, I believe I reviewed it on the channel. Um, the one where he has, like, the special effect, like, the little, like, battle pack one that came with Mew, I don't really care for that one anymore, because this is so much better. So, taking a look at this head sculpt here, I love him, he looks super cool, badass, very clean paint on the eyes, I like the head, and then, of course, he's got his head tuber, which does come out of his head, so if you want to, like, pose him, and then try to, like, bend that to, like, take, like, a photo, kind of like that. Like, that works, but when we get to articulation, we'll talk about how the neck is a little frustrating. But, um, that slides in there, and then you get, like, his, like, clavicles and, um, sternum little thingy there. I don't know, but he's got his arms. I love that the fingers are articulated. That is awesome. That is super cool. I love, love, love that. You do get just a little bit of paint on the, you know, bottom pelvis part of him. And then, of course, his big old tail um, with a little bit of, like, licensing. You get the holes there. The tail is super heavy. Super, super heavy. So, folding it up all the way, he's still not going to be able to stand um, without support from his tail because his joints are just too loose, which is the most frustrating part of this figure. If he could stand without... Um, the tail balancing, I, I might put him in top 10, but I'm probably going to wind up having him on a flight stand anyway, but we will talk about the flight stand as well. Then, of course, you get, like, his feet and his legs. They look great. This He looks fantastic. This is perfect for a Mewtwo. And then he does come with the figure stand, but I don't like it because they put it... They should have put it down here, first of all. Like, I think it should have been down there. So you could get him, like, flying, because he's, you know, he's like a cool flyer kind of Pokemon. But they put it, like, right above his back, and it has to go in on, like, an angle to accommodate for the tail. So it just doesn't, I don't know, it just looks weird to me. And, like, he can't, like, 
I don't know. I it doesn't stay in well unless I'm doing it wrong. And if I'm doing it wrong, somebody tell me. But I I don't know. It just doesn't doesn't do it for me the way that I think it should. So another useless stand. In terms of articulation, this is what I was talking about earlier. This tuber is soft, but it's still really like dense. So it pushes the head right back, unfortunately. So without it, he can look up all the way. It's just a matter of if you're careful enough, you could trim it because it'll allow him to look down. I don't know. It's or glue it in. I don't know. It really depends on how you want to do it. But for me, I'm just going to leave it as is. And it's probably going to be posed looking down anyway. And then it will rotate at the base of the neck, which also can get frustrating. But it does allow for some pretty good poses. Shoulders go up all the way. They go down. It'll rotate. Bicep swivel, which is hidden perfectly. Double jointed elbows. If they went pinless, this line would be perfect. And then hinge and swivel or hinge, swivel and hinge, and then all the fingers kind of rotate. I wouldn't push them too much. Just I would just treat them like they're just hinges, which is totally fine by me. You do get an upper diaphragm joint, which does let full motion happen. And then the one at the base allows you to go forward and back. So he could definitely get some poses in there. I like that a lot. Hips, they're really not going to go out. They will rotate 360. I would just be careful. There is a hinge in there, so they will do a little bit, but nothing crazy. I guess the stifle is going to hinge forward and back. It will not rotate. And then the um, the hock, I guess. Again, I don't know if Pokemon Anatomy. The hock will go down and up and kind of rotate, but not a little bit. And then the... Uh, I guess it's a pastern. I don't know. The pastern will go down here and just kind of his toes or whatever you want to call them. But they're super loose. So, like I said, he cannot stand without balancing on the tail. The tail will rotate here at the cut, which it, at first I didn't think it did, but then it broke the paint. And it does have a bendy wire in them. So, it's pretty good. It's thick. And again, it's extremely heavy. I cannot express that enough. Also, the color matching is perfect on that. Um, so, yeah, I am very happy to finally have a good articulated Mewtwo in my collection. Now I do wish some of the joints were a little bit more useful because unless you have him balancing on the tail or you plan on having him in a flight pose, he's really not gonna be able to stand there. Now let's take a look at each of the sets starting with my least favorite, the pond set. And again, just because it's my least favorite does not mean that it is not awesome because look at the amount of detail they put on this thing. It is amazing. I love all like the kelpy water going up there. You get a really nice touch is like the underwater part. It has this blue wash on it. That makes it look like it's underwater. That's amazing. Like that is such awesome detail. All these vines and shrubs have dry brush on the grasses up here. I don't know if it's like a marsh or a bog or something like that. The water has a translucent piece here. It's like a little puddle, so you can make one of the Pokemon look like they're jumping in it. You get some blue paint overspray over the rocks and the soils. It's just, man, you do get a little bit of grass on there. It is so well done. Airbrushing on the soil up top. Very, maybe they're Lakeland soils. All my soils people out there, you know what I'm talking about. But it's so well done. This one's going to come with Squirtle for the 10 millionth time. Good enough paint, whatever. I don't really care. What we care about is Poliwag. Look at him. He's just a little dude, man. I freaking... Oh, man. Poliwag is awesome. Now, here's my fun animal fact of the day. Obviously, this is meant to represent a tadpole, but a lot of people don't really know what this swirl is. There's a very distinct image online that if you were to look this up, you can see what this is based off of. Um, this is actually the digestive tract of a tadpole. In development of metamorphosis, um, they're kind of translucent skin because amphibians breathe through their skin. It's what differentiates them amongst them on the, on the money, many other things between reptiles. Um, but there's pictures of their intestines all around in there. And there's a very distinct picture that Poliwag was based off of, which is super cool. Um, one of my favorite designs of a Pokemon. I love Poliwag. But they look great in there. Very, very awesome. I love this a lot. This is a great set to have. Next up, we'll take a look at the Ancient Ruins set, which is, I guess, like a jungle kind of. I don't know. Ancient Ruins is more like anthropocentric to me. 
Um, and I'm okay with that. I think it's awesome. Again, you get some great dry brush on the pillars and the columns on here, the rubble kind of getting broken up. You do get a nice dry brush over the trees and the vines. Nice rock down here. Um, some dry brush on these grasses as well. You get wash on the leaves up top, the more arboreal species. It is awesome it's so dynamic and, and well put together for a 15 to 20 dollar product like i mean i pay 15 dollars a piece for these with like pro membership and things but whew, what a well done set i love all the dry brushes and cracks and rocks and things and this one is the first set that i have gotten to date that comes with two new pokemon for my collection first off We'll start with Honenge, or Honenge, however you want to pronounce it. Honage, I say Honage. Um, he comes with a little stand that he comes off of, but he does click in there, so it's not going to be loose. Very nice detailed paint. Definitely not one of my favorite Pokemon at all. Like, not even a little bit. I don't think I ever would have asked for Honage, but he's here, and he looks pretty good regardless. Very clean paint on this little guy of a figure, but this is what I'm here for. Almanite, look at him. He's so cute. He's got like a nice heart gel. He's got little skishy tentacles. Some kind of family mollusca little guy. I love Almanite. I love the fossil types. So more fossil types. That's why I want Kabuto um, and Mamoswine and all the prehistoric looking guys. I know Mamoswine's not technically a fossil type, but you know what I mean. But I really, really like him. Very, very cute. I love the bright colors. Very clean paint on these guys. Very awesome set to put together. And then finally, we have the Dark Mystic Forest, or whatever they want to call it. And golly, this is so well done. The amount of paint and detail that they put into this. The sculpt itself is amazing, but all the dry brushes of the light purple on top of the hollow tree, the mushrooms, the dry brush on the grass. They're like Chautauqua mushrooms, I guess. I don't know. I don't know my mushrooms very well. Um, get some nice dry brush on there. It is super, super cool. I love the color scheme here. This little pile of leaves is very painted. Um, all, oh, dude, you get some more arboreal fungal species. Some microbiums. Very, very cool. You know, look at that, dude. The phylum. It's so awesome. So awesome. Very, very cool looking. Then you get Mimikyu, which I already have Mimikyu, but he looks good. Nice, clean paint. All that good stuff. But a new Pokemon for sure, is Murkrow. Look at him. He's got his little sombrero. Little red paint on the back of him. And he does stand. I was worried he wouldn't stand, but he's he's good. And this is a perfect Pokemon for a set like this. Um, I think Mimikyu could have been different, to be honest, but I really like that we get Murkrow. He looks super awesome. And overall, this is probably my favorite set in terms of the design itself. Though I do like the Pokemon in the Ancient Ruins one a little bit more. Here they are next to the NECA Toys King Kong, along with the Jazzers Fortnite series Peely. I don't know why it's... Oh, it's a little bit better. But yeah, there they are standing next to them. So Mewtwo is definitely 6-inch scale, which I think looks awesome. Here they are standing next to the McFarlane Toys Dark Knight Returns Batman, along with the Hasbro Marvel Legends 6 and series Darwin. I would say that Mewtwo and Darwin kind of go together, and, like, he's, like, an evolved Pokemon, I guess? Like, a man-made? Like, I don't know. Not necessarily. I mean, he evolves. Pokemon evolve. And then Batman would probably be found lurking in the, the Dark Shadow Forest one. And then, of course, here they are next to the Marvel Legends What If Zombies series uh, Captain America. Man, dude. I really messed that one up, didn't I? So, yeah, this is a pretty awesome assortment of Pokemon, if you ask me. I really, really like what Jazzwares has been doing with this series, and I, I just hope that it keeps going and that we, we get... I would take hundreds of Pokemon. I'm happy to put them on the shelf. So, I think the sets themselves at $15 to $20, usually they go on sale, just keep that in mind. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give them each a 10 out of 10. I think that these are awesome for the price point and they make me happy and they add a lot of dynamics to the shelf which is something that not a lot of companies do in the sense of like world building so i think it's really cool that we're getting these little sets and mewtwo for 20 bucks is gonna get a i'll give it a 9 out of 10 because i think the joints are a little tight and the flight sand could have been done a little bit better but he's still one of the best in the whole series so overall i'm just really happy to get a whole bunch of new pokemon for me this is 
one, two, three, four, five new species for the shelf, which I'm pretty happy about. So with all that being said, I believe that's all I got for today. If you have not already, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Also be sure to follow me here on TikTok and on Letterboxd. I post a lot over on all those apps and I have a good time, especially on Letterboxd. Come on, guys, get me some followers on Letterboxd. Um, but I have a really good time over there, so I'm sure you all will too. But as always, let me know. You copping? I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Walk us on, guys. I wanted to hop on here again and thank you all for watching. And to let you know that if the following apps interest you, feel free to follow me on them as I put the links in the description for you guys. I really appreciate everything you all do for me, so DM me with any questions or thoughts. I'd love to sit and talk with you all. Again, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.